and Barchik, Arctic coast, northeast Siberia. The nearest town is a hundred kilometers away. At first glance, it seems that there is not much happening here. But beneath the surface, invisible to the naked eye, processes are taking place that have a major impact on global climate. Arctic soils host large amounts of carbon. And this carbon is exchanged with the atmosphere in the form of CO2 and methane, which are potent greenhouse gases. And this is the reason why we are interested in the region. So it's also difficult to make measurements there. And therefore we know very little about these processes so far. And this is why we focus our research on this area. Freedom and Roim and Matthias Gokade have returned from Mbarchik. They spent 14 days doing research in the field. The journey alone took them three days. Mm -hmm. The last kilometers to the weather and research station can only be traveled by boat. The scientists measure CO2 and methane 27 meters above the surface. The instruments track greenhouse gas concentrations every three seconds, all year round. The measurements here provide information about processes happening hundreds to thousands of kilometers away. We use weather models to figure out where air masses that we measure come from. So starting from the place and the time of the measurement in Ambarchik, we trace the air mass backwards in time to figure out where it came from. And in these places, uh, it could have interacted with the Earth's surface and there have taken up methane or CO2. Or uh, maybe it was also taken up by the soil and then there is less CO2 in the air mass. And from these measurements, we can estimate the sources and the sinks of methane and CO2. For this to work effectively, a lot of measurements need to be made. Not only in Ambarchik, but at many locations in tundra and boreal forests, where climate gases are exchanged between air and soil. Arctic permafrost soils currently contain a vast amount of organic carbon that is currently safely locked away because it's deep frozen and therefore removed from the climate system. Now, should the Arctic warm, and it is predicted that this is, uh, there will be a substantial warming, then a large part of this carbon reservoir could be destabilized and released into the climate system. So this could constitute a significant positive feedback to ongoing climate change, and therefore it's highly important to know how much carbon could be released under which warming scenario. How do Arctic ecosystems react when temperatures rise? The researchers aim to better understand and predict future developments and threats to global climate. Every trip into the solitude of Mbarchik brings the scientists closer to this goal. <laughs>